our final topic was on um, the standard algorithm of subtraction. And let, let's use this as an exemplar problem to um, illustrate the topics that we discussed. So we're going to use the standard algorithm, um, and that means we align it vertically like this. And just like in addition, it is very important that we keep our ones place, our tens place, and our hundreds place neatly lined up. That way, when we subtract, we know that we are subtracting like units. That means when we subtract, we are taking away from the same thing that we have. Um, so we're subtracting ones from ones, tens from tens, hundreds from hundreds. Now, um, one of the things that I think some teachers sometimes say, which really messes up students, is the phrase, we always subtract the smaller from the larger. That's not true. Um, we are going to be subtracting the number we are taking away, in this case 258, from the number 592. It is smaller, but let's look at this digit by digit and see why that's confusing. In this first place here, in this ones place, um, we're going to run into a problem that we have eight ones that we're taking away from two ones. Now, the mistake that sometimes people make is to say, well, I always take the larger, smaller from the larger, so I'm going to do eight minus two is six. Eh. All right. We have two ones here, and that's right. If we take away eight ones, we need more ones to take away from. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to decompose uh, these nine tens here um, and oops, um, we're going to take one of them so there'll be eight tens remaining and I'm going to add, break that ten into ten ones so instead of having two ones I now have twelve ones uh, let's check our, our other place values to make sure we won't run into any other problems because we want to do all this checking first can we take five tens from eight tens? Sure. Two hundreds from five hundreds? Yep. So that was the only area where I'm going to run into a problem in this particular problem. Uh, so then now let's subtract. Tw tw um, oh, I realized I did one thing wrong. I should have crossed out that two as well. Because it's, that's not there anymore. That's going to confuse me. I'm going to take eight ones from twelve ones. Leaves me with four ones. Five tens from eight tens. Leaves me with three tens. Two hundreds from five hundreds equals three hundreds. So that shows me that that's three hundred thirty-four. Let's look at another example. Five hundred thirteen minus one hundred forty-eight. Um, let's do our check first. Um, can we subtract in the ones place? Well, no. We have three ones and eight ones. So I'm going to run into a problem unless I borrow. So I'm going to borrow here. That becomes zero tens, and I now have thirteen ones instead of three ones. Let's look at that next place, the tens place. Um, I have four tens taken away from zero tens. That's also going to cause me a problem. So I'm going to borrow here, and I take one one hundred and make it into four hundreds and add that into the tens place as ten tens. Um, can I borrow in the hundreds? Yes. One minus, four minus one is fine. So let's go ahead and subtract. 13 minus 8 is 5, 10 minus 4 is 6, 4 minus 1 is 3. Now, I went through that pretty quick, but I wanted you to see that I had to do multiple borrowing steps there. Um, it's important that when I do my subtraction, that just like in addition, I start from the right side, and I'm going to really make my life easier if I do all my checking to make sure I can actually subtract before I do any of the subtracting down here. Um, that way, I, I have cleared up any areas of confusion first. Um, what would have happened if I started from this side is I'd say, ah, 5 minus 1 is 4, and then immediately I run into trouble. Let's look at one more case. Here's one where we're subtracting um, where there are multiple zeros. Um, this is one that often gets people confused. Uh, so let's look at it carefully. We see that both in the ones and in the tens um, that I can't subtract. So I'm going to need to be borrowing from the hundreds. And let's see how this works out. So I have six hundreds now. And I move that here. So then I have ten 
uh, tens, but I still haven't dealt with the problem over here in the ones place, so I'm actually going to have to borrow from there as well and break 110 into 10 ones. Um, and now I can subtract 10 minus 2 is, should have crossed that out, 10 minus 2, uh, I'm making mistakes everywhere. 10 minus 2 is 8, 9 minus 5 is 4, 6 minus 0, because we actually have a secret 0 here, there's no hundreds there, 6 minus 0 is 6. Uh, so, again, we see a lot of things that coming into play here. First of all, I had to have everything lined up where the ones are below the ones. If I, if I set up my problem like this, this is a mistake, I'm going to have problems. So don't do that. Um, and I have I made sure that I could borrow and that I could subtract in every place before I started subtracting. Uh, there's a lot of, with these ones with multiple zeros, it, there's a lot of room for error, and I just have to make sure I'm really careful. Um, let's look at one more case where we're dealing with zeros. 802 minus 569. Uh, starting looking at the ones place. Uh, I'm going to have a problem there, so I know I'm going to need to borrow. But look, I can't borrow from the tens place, because there's nothing there. So I have to actually start by borrowing in the hundreds place. And then this becomes 10 but I'm going to borrow from it, so it actually becomes 9, and this becomes 12. Um, if I, that was too fast for you, back it up and watch it again. Um, subtraction can be tricky, but it's a matter of really understanding these procedures and why you're doing them. So now I have 12 ones minus 9 ones, which is 3 ones, 9 tens minus 6 tens, which is 3 tens, 7 hundreds minus 5 hundreds is 2 hundreds. Uh, as long as you think through each step and make sure that you are always subtracting this number from this number, you'll be okay. If you ever find yourself subtracting the top number from the bottom number, you know you've made a mistake. Um, and again, with this one, I'm going to link to a place where you can get some practice sheets. If you want to practice some more of this at home, I'd really recommend it. All right, hope this helps.